Um, cool. All right, everybody, ha are you guys happy to go for it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a really important aim of the whole project to make sure uh, it's, like it's just to like we're talking with them, like what they've done before the pandemic, what they worked at, really what like their hobbies were, their all that sort of thing. Um, so like, I'd love to know about how they're feeling in regards to their mental health and do they have friends and family who are um, helping them with their day to day shopping? things like baking and sewing. Sorry. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Like other people. Also, I think it might be really good because a lot of us are involved in drama if we like took some of the stories they've talking to us about like stuff they've struggled with if we made it into a kind of like performance so hi joan how are you i'm very well thank you hi i'm Sive. lovely to meet you hi Sive. my name is kay and i'm delighted to meet you too hello hello victoria hi shadow Hiya, how are you? Uh, struggling a bit. Hello. Hello, Dylan. Hi, my name's Dylan. We should talk louder. Do you want me to speak a bit louder, yeah? Pardon? I'll speak a bit louder for you, yeah? Am I keeping well? Hi, um, I'm Aaron O'Brien. I'm 18 and I'm... Would you talk a little slower? Oh, yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm 95 years of age. I suppose you're a happy married man, are you? Oh, no, no, not just yet, not just yet. Will you have children? No, no, I'm only 16. Uh, so, oh, you're only, you're only school like yourself. Yeah, I'm only in school. I'll ask you a question. If you've done it, you say yes. If you haven't, just say no. And then um, if you say yes, I'll probably ask you to elaborate on it. Have you ever gone mountain climbing? No. Ever gone rock climbing or on a hike or a trailer? No. Have you ever owned a pet, an animal? No. Have you ever ridden a motorcycle? No. Have you ever met a celebrity or a personal idol of yours? No. Have you ever played an instrument? No. Um. I have vertigo very bad. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, carry on, we'll see how we get on. Have you ever been in love with someone? Of course, yes. Mm. Can you tell me about that? I've been in love with my husband mm -hmm. and my children. How did you and your husband meet? Uh, that's a long story. <laughs> Go ahead, tell it. Wrote her a letter and asked her would she be interested in going to the do that. And I made myself a commitment. If I wasn't married by 24, I was going to go to the missions. So we were going for a walk down um, on the beach at Clontar on the coast road at Clontarf along the beach and she had the hiccups so I thought to give her a shock and cure her hiccups and asked her would we get married so we got married we don't want to be home bought a house on Richmond Road 850 quid uh, I got involved in a youth club uh, and um, it was only for men for boys Right, okay. And then the upper priest wanted to have girls in the youth club. And we said, no, 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 we don't want them. We, don't. <laughs> yeah. we weren't interested in girls. Right, we were yeah. still playing cowboys and Indians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We were 16 at the time now, by the way. <laughs> and uh, my wife was one of the girls that came to the youth club. Oh, very good. And that's when we met. We didn't become, uh, shall we say, uh, lovebirds at that stage. Uh, we went the wrong ways. We met again at 18, and uh, I was married at 21 years of age. We were married 51 years. Wow. She passed away. Uh, he was County Mead, ma'am. Oh. So with her, I was, of course, born and reared in Dublin, as you might know from the accent. And I came to Drogheda in 1960. We got married in 1966, and I came to Drogheda to start in 1967. And we had ch three children, 49 years together, when he unfortunately died from an aneurysm. He died very quickly, got sick on Monday, was dead on Tuesday. Mm. Uh, this one. And I miss him. We wouldn't call it rows, we're just differences of opinion. Yeah. And that leaves us both very independent people. And um, I suppose Brian, um, he's, he was self-employed. So he was far more flexible than I had. And he sort of couldn't understand maybe uh, why I had to be so punctual and 
uh, tied to time. Whereas a farmer, after as long as this the day, I said, it doesn't matter if it's not the hour, the day, and things like that. Somebody said, how did you know? And the only answer I give is, you just know. You just have a feeling this is the person for me. Rish has been in Hamilton since January. It's hard, but it was the right thing for her at that moment. Her mind, you see. And I'm finding it hard getting around on my own. Operation on my hip in April. I get to talk to her on the internet most nights. She'd just be worried about all the cases of coming in the other residential care homes, but Hamilton seems to be fine so far. I see her on the computer. It's odd, but I'm sure what isn't odd these days. House is quiet now without her, without the kids. They're in England, two of them, two lads. One works for Barclays, the other for a PR firm, advertising and likes of that. They check in every few days. It's crazier where they are, to be honest. Your man Johnson's some tulip. Computers flashing here in front of Rita calling. Uh, I, I better get this. I'm very in innovative. I was an engineer during my working life. And my brain is still working good. I'm also interested in graphology. Do you know what graphology is? Uh, no, I don't. Could you please explain that? Handwriting analysis, in other words, is character and personality analyzed from your handwriting. You can tell an awful lot from the way a person writes. Did you know that? I did not, but I have heard it been said before, but I didn't know how accurate it was. I do me messages and I come down and do me breakfast. My son is here with me. At have his breakfast, uh, and sometimes he has his son with him, which is very nice. Yeah, that's nice. I never feel that the day is a problem or a board, and I have plenty of boards in my garden. I feel do do do, do the dinner, do the washing, do the washing up. Like, um, my next door neighbour, of course, is invaluable because she comes in every Saturday morning, and do we just have a cup of coffee together or what have you? And what does she do? Is she so well and she does your... I just an age. Oh! <laughs> Lovely. All my life I've had an interest in photography. And I still have a camera. I still have a camera. Canon. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, I still have a camera. And I take photos and then I put it into the... Into the in the computer, force yourself and doctor them up and do what I want. So all that takes up my time. So that's yeah. what I that's what I try to do. If I'm well, I try to get out in the garden if I can with the cat, and then I would have a lie down in my bed. If I take my tablets, have a lie down in my bed. And then if I'm feeling well in the evening, I'll try and get some food together. That's it, and you try and keep yourself busy. Pardon? Trying to keep yourself busy. Yeah, well, you can't be very busy if you've got vertigo. Now, I think it's marvellous if I could go outside the door. But not, that's not very good. No. I've, deter I've deteriorated in body and mind over the sea virus, as I call it. I've fallen again, this time on the bathroom floor. I was thinking about Laura and the baby and wondering what they were doing for the weekend and suddenly I was on my arse on the floor. I'm on this floor now three hours, trying to inch myself into the bedroom so I can get to my phone. Who do I call then when I get there is the next question. Laura lives in Offaly now, moved there with Seamus after they got married. It's five years ago now. It used to be that Peter was the one who was unsteady on his feet vertigo. I look up and see the two of us on the wall. 46 years ago now on the day we were married. He had hair on his head then. Gone six years now but he's still here at the same time. I feel him looking over me. I see him laughing at the state of me, crawling along the floor. Would you get up out of that Mary? What do you like? 
I'm closer to the bedroom now, and I can see my mobile sitting up on my locker. Who do I call, though? Lot of the televisions have been knocked to hell, haven't they? Oh, I, I exactly. Like, there's nothing for it. They're trying yeah. to figure out what to record, but... There's nothing they to record. They have a, the jungle one. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of yeah, here. Yeah, it's in a it castle. Fails. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. I have a lot of interests. I write poetry and I do uh, uh, reading, uh, a lot of reading. It's actually really interesting because I also write poetry and doing... Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I do, I do. I write poetry. And during oh, lockdown, what? I wrote yeah. many and many poems and uh, I, I, I felt like... It was a great inspiration and all, and I think um, it's a good way to express myself. So I write poems, and most of them I turn into music because I'm a musician. And uh, could you read me one of your poems? Yes, yeah, like I could actually. I know one by head. I I know one by head. Let me let me think about it. Okay, right, okay. it's it goes like this. Since I was young, I have had this dream. The dream was real, but it was too hard to conquer. I kept dreaming even though dreams not always come true. Dreaming is not living. However, dreams make living to have a purpose. And my purpose was to make a change in this world. I didn't want to be ordinary. I was not ordinary and I won't ever be. I would tell myself that time is ticking and time is limited, but it wasn't enough until. Since I was young, I have had this dream. The dream was real and now, well, now it's not that hard to conquer. <laughs> that's that's beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I have to uh, read my poems, but I'd like to read one poem for you. I call it A Yellow Rose. All right. Senses soar. The whole world I can see. Sitting in my armchair. No living soul aware. I hide myself from gaze of curious eyes. Allow my misty form to drift at will. Time has no dimension here. I have no ties. Enter within. There my soul holds a place. Be it the earth, the depths, I share its mysteries. Today I will approach a yellow rose. I just feel angry now. I wake up with it. It's with me all day and it keeps me awake at night. I'm angry with everyone even the people who don't deserve it. The kids from next door. I can't even smile at them or wave back when they say hello to me from their garden. I've been forgotten, left behind. I think we all have. The elderly. People always marvel at the generosity of the Irish, but I don't see it. I don't see it now. When I kind of walked in at the start of the school year, I didn't recognise the school. It was like a completely different one to the one I'd been going to the last few years of my life. It doesn't feel real, you know, and um, especially because that was after quarantine. I hadn't been to school in ages. It felt like a fever dream. You know, I couldn't even imagine putting a uniform on again. Spray down our desks and our seats every time we come, come into the class. We always have to have our masks on and if they catch you with your mask, even below here, you get sent home. And at lunchtime now, they used to come around and just give us the food from the cart. But from this week, we've started going down to the canteen. So we all just line up, keeping our two metre distance. We get our food and we go back up to our classroom. So it's like a one way system where we all have to follow in the school. After school, then I will get the bus home. And again, it is masks on all the way to the house, which is unusual because I'm used to sitting on the bus and having a bit of crack with the lads. But sitting on with the masks on, and it, it is unusual and having to try and social distance while we're there, is, it's, it's hard to do. Usually we do only do Christmas assessments, mocks and exams, but now we've done October assessments, November assessments, and I think we're doing Christmas ones as well because they want to stockpile grades just in case of another predicted grade situation because they didn't, they didn't have enough last year to have proper predictions. So I think they're just trying to prepare for that, but that just means there's a lot more stress on us, trying to prepare for the studies week after week of more exams and a lot more, just a lot more homework in general, just so they can get an average out on us, basically. I'm sorry, am I supposed to start? Okay. 
I get off the phone with Nana. She's angry again, ranting, shouting at me that I'm not to be out on the streets this weekend. I keep telling her I haven't left the house in six months, but she doesn't seem to believe me. She thinks I'm out on the town like Drogheda's answer to Lindsay Lohan or something. I tell her to stop listening to Joe Duffy. Honest to God, that man seems to poison the minds of the elderly. Some aegis are drinking on the streets on a Saturday night and then for the next two months every teenager is getting it in the neck from their grandparents. She calms down then. Nana says it's me she's worried about. I tell her I'm worried about her too and we have a giggle then. I miss her hugs. Most nights when I lie down I imagine giving her a little squeeze and her giving me one, and then I'm out like a light. That's all it takes. I turned 18 last week, seven days ago now. So it's just like, you know, that was supposed to be such a milestone and it was always something I looked forward to so much. And like my best friends, like our friend group all turned 18 in November. And it's like yeah. November was supposed to be the party yes. month, but yeah. there's just none of that now. It's just, um, but I did still have a really good birthday and I still have really good friends that I can socially distance with. Like we get a coffee box here in Drogheda every Sunday and it's, it's really nice, even though it's, it's sad at the same time, but it's, it is lovely. I think a lot about um, going to sleep with not a lot of actually going to sleep. <laughs> um, I feel like I scroll a lot of social media that doesn't really mean anything. Um, I think a lot about my boyfriend, uh, just because I haven't seen him in a good while. Uh, so I just kind of do that. Um, and yeah, I suppose it just kind of feels disconnected. Some nights I will lie down, put my head in the pillow and I'll be gone straight to sleep. Well, other nights I'll be sitting up till two or three in the morning just thinking just of... I don't know, the next morning, to be honest, I don't really know what. It's just it's stuff that keeps my mind racing, so it does. Sometimes... I dream about an exam I have coming up or sometimes I dream about, you know, new shows coming out that don't really exist and I get really excited about them and then I wake up and they're not real. But um, other times definitely I think about crazy things um, like, I don't know, this seems weird, I kind of have violent dreams sometimes. Um, which is funny because I'm not a very violent person. I don't really do well with gore. We don't just get to be in each other's company anymore. It's never just that, you know? It's always, there's always something to be thinking about, something else in the back of your mind that's kind of nagging you. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't gone to the shops with them in over a year. It's just everything that seemed so normal before, going out to eat with them, everything. Now it's just you sit in the canteen, you talk about what class you have next. It, it takes a bit of it out of you, you know? And I think as well, like a lot of people get annoyed at us when we're like with our friends and stuff as well. It, it, it affects your mental health a lot and it kind of, it makes you scared and I've, I've noticed I've been way more stressed with like different assignments and stuff that I've loads of time to do. I go to bed and I'm like, oh, I don't have this done and I need to do this and I don't have enough time in the day. And obviously like I'm, I'm in fifth year, I, my life can't be that stressful, but definitely I take on a lot of things like that and that's kind of what's in my head. We're crazy, like we were like just so energetic and like we'd always be messing and all this. I don't know, she was just, what's the word? She was the, the wor person you would like least expect to um, commit suicide. She was a dancer and she was a phenomenal dancer. And she had so much going for her, so it was like, Completely, like, we, like, when I hit, we were just like, oh my God, like, what is going on? Like, we thought it was a dream at the start and we thought, like, something was happening. So on the, I think it was on the 20th of October. Yeah, it was the 20th of October was the day she passed away. But the 20th of October, a notice went out that she was missing. And 
like that came to a shock and we were kind of like, oh, she'll be found, like, you know, like it, she'll be found and like it'll be all all OK and everything OK. It was just, it was it was weird. It was a weird feeling or whatever, because like I've obviously never experienced anything like that. Um, so then we afterwards, I went out and like we all like there was a search party, you know, everything out for. So we were all looking and all that, but like there was no no joy and 12 hours passed and then it was longer and longer. And then we were just walking back to the shop up by our school and we heard like loads of ambulances and loads of fire brigades like just driving past us and like we just knew like it was just kind of a it was kind of like a I don't know it was just like you knew like that so like it wasn't good and it, it was a like a horrible feeling like you, you just got the shivers and you're just kind of like oh shit like this is like real life like you just kind of learn to live with it and um, and you try to take day by day like you have your good days and you have your bad days but like it's the good days that you need to remember like they have to outweigh the bad days eventually so it is a good factor um, to remember and especially with the lockdown, you have to always check up on your friends, especially the ones that you least expect. That will be like lonely and like sad and all that. So uh, it's important to everybody. You should check up on everybody, no matter like if he's there any dis disagreement, like fix the disagreement because you never know what's going to happen next. But um, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I can't sleep. It's been two weeks now, and each night gets harder and harder. I watch old episodes of Drag Race with headphones and watch the hours go by. I hear the traffic at about seven, and I know that's bad because it means I have to be up for school in half an hour. Every day goes by like a fever dream. The classes are longer now, and each day bleeds into the next. Is it Monday or Friday? I honestly don't know. I pass the trophy cabinet in the canteen and I try to keep my eyes on the floor because to look at it still makes my heart ache. You put most of those awards in there. The Intercounty Championship, the National League. You were our beacon, our captain, our fearless leader. It was a year in May since you left us. And they tell me it will get easier, and I know that it will, just not right now. We share a look and a smile. You feel my heart ache, and I feel yours. And in that moment, I know we'll be OK. We'll come back in the next quarter, stronger than ever. We lift each other up. We lift each other up. I'm sorry to hear you lost a friend. It Thank must you. Have been yeah. Dreadful, really, because I, I, funnily enough, I, I lost a friend, and I had a birthday remembrance mass for her yesterday. She would have mm. been 101. Yesterday. Oh my God, that's amazing. I knew her 52 years, oh. and we were great friends. But she died during lockdown. When you've had a loss in your family, I think maybe. When you're in that type, it maybe it, it, something like that becomes really obvious. I, I would imagine, yeah. you know, you really yeah. feel. I know I've gone to. I haven't had a close. You know, there's nobody, nobody close within our family. But I have, you know, maybe gone to a graveyard and stood, mm. you know, a distance away. And I think that's where I think in those type of situations, it just feels so strange. Yeah. Not and to, it makes you like realize how important they are when you never absolutely. really realized before. It's the contact with me. Yeah. As you say, technology is no substitute. No, absolutely not. No. I have I have great admiration for the young people of today. And um, they're very kind, you know, they're very open minded and they're not, I think, near as um, critical as maybe we were. They don't criticize nearly as much as we did in our days where everything went wrong. I mean, the, the highlight of our week when we, grew, when we were teenagers was getting the pictures on a Sunday night. And um, they have far more freedom now. They're far more money than we ever had because they have jobs. They have, um, they all have uh, pocket money that we never had. And I think they're great. We're talking animals. We're not, we're not, we're, we have got great writers, but generally speaking, we actually prefer to talk 
um, Irish people. And not to be able to do that is, and not to have that human touch um, where you can, you mean, I would be a little huggy, huggy person. I would, I would want to get, uh, when I go to meet people, I want to give them a hug. I'm the same, yeah. It's good to be good to others, you know? Don't keep to yourself all the time. No, try to mingle, try to get in touch, try to approach, try to help, try to see someone, even if you're having a walk, you see someone passing, you say, come on, hello. It's, uh, it's something. To care about people and to be there for them. Yes. To understand other people. That's, that's a nice one, actually. That's really sweet. I used to be a scout when I was younger and I used to love going camping in the woods and just walking up the oh, mountains. I thought so, yes. Yeah. That's very I look around you and take in nature. Look at the trees, look up at the trees, try to see the sky. Yeah. 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 Very nice. The, and then look at the different textures and the different leaves. And that can be very, very, very educating and, and uh, satisfying also. Yeah. I work on a farm as well, so I just go out to the farm over weekends or after youth reach or something like that, and I just work away at that, and then I'm making my few pounds, so I am saving, so it just passes the time. I'm usually just cleaning the yards, milking them, and then feeding the calves, I suppose, and then that's that'd be really it. It's, it passes the time. I'd be out there at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then I'd be home at 10, and I wouldn't even realise what time it was. The other night I was in my element because I just turned over the television and it was the Bee Gees on. Oh, right. Of the Bee Gees. And they were singing, How Deep Is Your Love? And I didn't feel too bad. I had a little cry and I was quite happy after. And they were singing, Stay alive, stay alive. <laughs> and I was feeling well then and I did a little dance then. I wasn't uh, too bad with the vertigo, and I was staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> it made me feel that I was going to live. <laughs> it's been lovely chatting to you. You too. You too. Best of luck for the future for you. You too. And I hope you'll lie on the beach in Valley, and I hope you'll <laughs> climb the Rocky Mountains and, and go down the Seine in a barge. So please, God, have yeah. a wonderful time and, you and too. take care of yourself. Well, the best of luck in your years mm. to come. And, Thank you very uh, much. Enjoy every day. Yeah. Enjoy every day. Yeah, it was lovely talking to you. It was really nice. And you. Yeah. Perhaps we get another chance to meet up and have a chat. Hopefully after lockdown we'll see each other face to face. Yes, and I wish you all the best years to come. Thank you. You're a very nice lad. I, I believe it too. I believe before things get better, they need to get worse. Yes. So I think we're going through this rough time right now. But yeah. at the end of the day, everything will be Okay. Please God, I will meet you. Yes. And, uh, and have that cup of coffee. Yes, <laughs> we will. <laughs> I might even treat you to a cake for my old age pension. Okay, yeah. <laughs>